Over the last three years, as we've made progress on our homestead, in the back of my mind, the topic of solar and how to best utilize it has been bouncing around. I've researched and read everything that I thought was worth reading. I've talked to many different professionals trying to narrow down good, better, and best. In some cases, I had opportunities to talk with the biggest names in the solar industry. And truth be told, I seem to get different answers over and over and over again. In some cases, I would get different answers even within the same companies, especially with the off-grid application. Questions like, do I run my solar panels in series or parallel? Questions like, do I need a charge controller and an inverter? Questions like, how far can the batteries be away from the solar panels? A few months back, I was introduced to a company called Solark. For the first time in this journey, as far as solar is concerned, I seem to get more direct and straightforward answers. As we've been building the house, I felt that it would be better to have all the components inside the house versus outside, as I would be able to control the temperature and have ease of access to the components, especially the batteries, when it comes to maintenance. Research shows that lead acid batteries are just as good as AGM batteries if they're properly maintained. The problem is most people don't maintain their batteries properly. By having the battery bank inside, this should allow me to easily, on a monthly basis at least, check the batteries, test the batteries, and do whatever maintenance is required. The downside is as the batteries get charged, they off gas. They release a hydrogen, which is potentially flammable. Not only is it flammable, but it's also corrosive. Over the last couple of years, I've looked at a number of different battery enclosures trying to determine which one would be best for our application. We have 16 L16 batteries. I couldn't find anybody that made a cabinet for 16 batteries. I found a couple of companies that made cabinets for eight batteries, and we considered buying two of these cabinets. We chose not to buy these cabinets because they were incredibly expensive. I reached out to a couple of friends in the business, specifically another YouTuber, Engineer775, you guys might be familiar with him and picked his brain on this topic. Scott told me that they've done a number of different things for battery enclosures. I told him I was considering building my own battery enclosure specific to my needs. He thought that that wouldn't be an issue.
As you can see, I built my battery box out of good old OSB and 2x4s. I used oil-based Kiehl's primer to seal up the box as best as I could. I used more of the Kiehl's primer on the inside than I did the outside, trying to seal against that potential corrosion that I know is going to happen as the batteries are charged. The second thing I did is I built a venting system into the battery box. I'm definitely not the first to do this, but I added my spin to my battery box. I used what's called a two inch spin and seal shower drain around the OSB in the box. I put one down low and one up high. This will naturally draw air in and out as the temperature changes. But just to be safe, I have a 12 volt computer fan that will go inside one of those two inch vents. The other thing that I will do as we start to use the batteries is I will have a thermometer on the battery bank just to ensure that they don't get too warm or too cold. Now I need to be able to get in and out of the battery box at least once a month and know that when I close it up it's sealed and sealed well. I used a peel and stick foam sealant between the lid and the box to give me that seal. But I will also build some sort of an easily accessible latch that allows me to open and close the box without too much energy. The easier it is for me to get in and out of that box is gonna guarantee that I check the levels in those batteries on a regular basis. I submitted a series of questions about the solar system to Solark. Their engineer is helping me through some of these questions. As I connect the batteries and the panels to the inverter, I will discuss these questions. Some of the questions that I submitted to the Solark engineer are, what gauge wire do I need to use between the solar panels and the inverter? What gauge wire do I need to use on the batteries? Is it important that the battery cables are equal in length? How do I transition from the solar panels to the wire that will connect to the inverter? Now some of these questions I know the answer to, but I feel like they have not been answered very well on the internet. So again, I will go over these as I hook the system up and as we start using it. We also chose to do tankless water heaters that require propane in our house. The one downside to tankless water heaters in cold country is the water temperature. If your water temperature is below 54 degrees, more than likely you will not have the amount of hot water that you need in your home.
Because of the size of our family, I will run two water heaters in series using the first water heater to get the water over 54 degrees and the second water heater to get it up to temperature. We will also do another detailed video on the tankless water heaters when we get to that point. I wanted to get both the inverter and the water heaters out of the boxes and hung so I can start making the preparations to get them online. I still haven't heard from the drywall contractor. I'm hoping he finishes the job that he's on so he can get back to helping me. Regardless, we're going to move forward. On a positive note, it looks like we're going to have our own camp trailer to live in versus borrowing one from a friend, and we're hoping to pick it up on Sunday. This is good. Okay, myself and the dog had to cut out a little bit early today. I've got to run into town and pick some stuff up. Um, I was able to get the two A.O. Smith tankless water heaters hung and in place. More than anything, I just wanted to get them unboxed and get them up on the wall where they're going to be long term. I, I did the same thing with the Solark uh, inverter. Um, I still have a few questions in regard to uh, how to wire my, uh, my system. Um, Solark has been incredibly good to work with. Uh, anytime I have questions day or night, they literally have a 24 hour a day uh, helpline seven day a week helpline with uh, any questions like that so I'm gonna go ahead and put an email together and just kind of uh, just kind of submit my uh, my questions in regard to what size the wire needs to be coming from my battery I'm sorry what size the wire needs to be coming from my solar panels to the house or to the inverter um, and then what size the uh, wire needs to be uh, on the batteries uh, I'm guessing either one or two watts somewhere in that range um, but that solar converter seems to be way more efficient than everything else on the market and so I don't want to spend any more money on wiring than I have to and if I have to put one uh line up there I'll probably get some uh, some welders wire welding welding cable uh, something along those lines which is which is totally usable it's heavy-duty stuff so there's nothing wrong with that but before I do anything, I'm just going to clarify everything with Solar, get my questions answered, get that um, that solar system, uh, get the beginning phases of getting it wired up, so we can start using that. You know, it's we're not far away from being able to use our lights up there. So um, I got to pick up a few fittings for the vents on the uh, AO Smith uh, tankless water heaters, and then they're basically ready to go. So.